first of all, with my experience living in temporary accommodation, uh, there were quite a, ra a range of emotions and a conflict of experiences within the actual refuge itself. Um, it certainly saved mine and my son's life. I will never be so grateful to anyone as I was to the refuge for taking us in. Um, the issues that we faced were certainly staff related. Initially, when we first arrived at the refuge, there was such wonderful supporting staff. However, as the staff changed, the rules changed. There was a conflict of rules and we felt that one particular staff member would be picking on select residents. She would have her favourites. She would constantly contradict the rules of the house. So, for example, you weren't allowed to leave your child unattended, but then equally you weren't allowed to take them into the kitchen. But if you can't take them in the kitchen, then what do you do with them? You have to leave them in the living room. And when you are cooking, you have to constantly be poking your head around the door. Um, again, which which is fine. But if there's other residents in the living room, then you are then accused of leaving your children with them, which isn't allowed. That's not what you've done. So it was just a constant battle of trying to tick every single box that we needed to that we needed to tick in order to continue receiving support. I think an additional support system would have been definitely support for the children within the refuge. There was a children's support worker there. However, she was county based, not city based. It just so happened that her office was in the city. So while she had all the resources and the knowledge and ability to be helping our children, she wasn't actually allowed to go near them. And I felt it was quite unfair that we had a county child support worker in the refuge when we were in the city and there was no room for a city child support worker in our refuge. So our children were suffering. I think regarding the issues that we faced within the refuge, again, it was all down to staffing. I want to make that completely clear. And I think that in order to maintain and achieve a set standard, to ensure that all residents are supported emotionally would be for an outside agency to come in once every now and then, maybe once a month or so, and speak to the residents in private. Because you don't always feel like you can say something, because if you say something, then it will make it worse, and it has done in the past. Uh, I certainly think that the work undertaken by the Champions Project is most definitely of value and absolutely needs to be sustained. I do think that it could be more widespread, but I understand, or as far as I understand, that is the aim.